The tag editor plugin lets you easily add functionality to different parts in your game. For example, I'm going to select this part and then I'll go to the tag editor window in the bottom right. I'll select light and it becomes a light and then I can select rotate. It starts rotating and then I can select the kill brick and then it'll become a kill brick and kill me. Here's an example of why this would be useful if you can't tell already. Imagine you have a lava brick with a script inside of it that kills a player. You make a ton of different copies of the brick. You spread them all across the map and then you decide that you actually don't want the brick to kill players you want it to reduce their health by 10. normally you'd have to go through and change the script for every single brick but with the tag editor there's only one script to change the first thing that you need to do for this tutorial is go to the link in the description for the tag editor and it's by sweet artichoke just go ahead and click install it'll open up roblox studio and install it once it's installed go to the plugins tab and you should see the tag window plugin right here in the top looks like this tag and then the world view. If you don't see that, just go ahead and restart Roblox Studio and then you should see it after that. Click on tag window and you should see it pop up in the bottom right. And then after that, we can go ahead and start talking about how the tag editor actually works. The tag editor just uses the collection service, which is a service that manages the groups or collections of instances with tags. And tags are just a set of strings applied to objects. So to dumb that down a little bit, whenever you tag a part like this part, you're just attaching a string to it. So before we at attach the rotate tag or the rotate string to it, we attached a string called kill brick and light. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And now we're starting from scratch. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our first tag. So just go ahead and click on add new tag to create a new tag. And we're going to name this tag random color. So let's type in random color. And now we've created our first tag. So I'll select this part. And as you can see, when I have this part selected, the random color tag is just like this. It's not blue, but if I click it, it turns blue. Now when I click this part over here, you'll see that the random color is no longer blue. I click back on the part that we tagged and it is blue. So that's one way to tell if a part is tagged. The other way is to click on world view on the top. And as you can see, the part now shows up in this blue and if I mouse over it, it has the class of the part, the name of the part, and then the tag that is attached to it. So I recommend having this world view on if you wanna be able to see which tags you have active on each part. Now we can go ahead and create another tag. I'll create one called light. So type in light, hit enter, and you'll see that show up. Again, I'm gonna click on this part. And as you can see, random colors in blue because the this part that we have selected has the random color tag. I'll click on light and now it changes, it changes colors again. I'll mouse over it and you can see it has the random color and the light tag. In the background, the plugin is just using this add tag function from collection service. So you can also add tags to different parts like this. So in a script, you could use the collection service colon add tag function to add a tag if you don't wanna do it through the plugin. Now let's write a script to make these tags actually do something. So go ahead and insert a script and you can insert the script wherever you want, but I'm gonna use the server script service. So type in script and insert it. And let's get scripting. The first thing that we need to do is get the collection service. So type local collection service equals game colon get service collection service. And then after that, we need to use the get tagged function to get all the different parts that are tagged with our tags. So use a for loop, the for underscore part in pairs, then collection service colon get tagged and then the name of the tag that we want to find. So random color. So this function get tagged will go through and find every part in our game that is tagged with the random color tag and return a table of it here. So then we can loop through all of the items that are tagged with the random color tag. So what we want to do with the random color tag is just change all the parts that are tagged with it to some random color. So do part dot brick color equals brick color dot random. Now when I run the game, you'll see that the part changed to a random color. I'll run it again. And as you can see, it's a new random color. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but it'll be for the light tag. So I'll just copy and paste this. I'll change the tag to light. And now we're going to create a new light for each part. So we'll do local point light equals instance dot new and then point light. And then after that, we're going to change the brightness, just up it a little bit. So it's easier to see that there's actually a light in these parts. We're going to change the color doing point dot color equals color three dot new. And then I'll just uh, select whatever color I want here. So let's do a yellow color. And then after that, 
we actually need to parent the color or the point light other. So the point light dot parent equals part. And this will just put the point light inside of the part that is tagged with light. I'll run the game again. And as you can see now, this part is lighting up because there's a light in it. But if I go over to this part, click on it, and then I click on light, as you can see, nothing happens. I tag it with light, but nothing happens at all. And back here on this one that has a light, if I untag it, the light isn't removed. So we need to change that. So we need to constantly monitor when a part is either tagged with the light tag or when the light tag is removed. So I'll type local added light signal equals collection service colon get instance added signal and then the name of the tag which is light and then i'm going to do the same thing but with the get instance removed tag so i'll change added to removed and then same on the function get instance removed sig signal and then after this we're going to connect to these different signals. So these signals are just events. So it's just like connecting to a touched event, for example. So this is just a event right here that we need to connect to. So do added light signal, colon connect, then function, and then this function will receive the part that was added. And then this is where we write the code. So again, this function right here, added light signal, will be fired whenever something is tagged with light and whatever object is tagged with the light tag will be passed in right here. So if I wanted to add the light, I'll just copy and paste this. Could also make a function rather than just repeating the same code, but I'll just copy and paste it for now. And now if I run the game, if I go over to a part that isn't tagged with the light, I'll click it and then I'll tag it. And now there is a light, but when I remove the tag, the light is not removed. So to remove it, I'm just going to copy and paste the removed light signal. I'm going to connect to it just as I did the added light signal, the function called part. And then instead of adding a light, I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to make a variable local point light equals part colon find first child point light because, because that's the name of the light. And then I'll type if light, then light colon destroy. So this is just making sure that the light hasn't been removed. I need to change this to point light actually. So this is just make sure that the light hasn't been removed. If you know it's there, then you don't need this, but I'm just gonna do that as a precaution. Now see when I select this part and I untag it, the light is removed, I can tag it again and the light shows up and the same goes for these parts. I'll tag it, light is added and then light is removed. Now I'm gonna show you something that's a little bit more complex. We're gonna do a kill brick and we'll be tracking the connections to the kill brick. So Type in kill brick to add a new tag down here. And I'll hit enter, and now we have a new tag. And I'll go ahead and tag this part with the kill brick tag. I'll go to the script and we can get scripting. Like local kill connections, which will be a table that will track all the connections for the touch events. So kill connections equals table. And then after this, we're going to create a function that will be connected to the touch event. So type local function on touched kill other part and i'm not going to explain this in too much detail because i have a whole tutorial on that so be sure to check that out if you don't know how this works local humanoid equals other part dot parent colon find first child which is a humanoid and i needed to correct a typo and here i spelled this with a capital i and then after that i'm going to make sure that the player or that it is a player that touched the part if it is, I'll set the humanoid's health equal to zero. So this function just makes sure that when a player touches this part, uh, this is the player or potentially like their arm or leg, make sure that there's a humanoid. If there is a humanoid, we're gonna set the health to zero. Again, if you don't know how this works, check out my video on touch events. So then after this, what we're gonna do is the same as we did before, we're gonna loop through and check to see the different objects that are tagged with the kill brick tag. So collection service, get tagged and then the objects that are tagged with kill brick and then for these what we're going to do is we're going to track the kill connections so we'll do kill connections the part that is tagged equals and then part dot touched colon connect to the function that we just made up here the untouched kill so now we're storing a connection because if you didn't know whenever you connect to an event like touched this returns a connection to that event 
right in here. So we're storing in the kill connections, a connection for this part uh, to the touched event. And then we can later on disconnect this. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then what I'm also gonna do is create the kill signals, uh, the added and removed signals as I did before. Before I'll copy this, paste it down here. I'll change this to added kill signal and then removed kill signal. I'll change light to kill brick for both of these. And then I'm gonna do just as I did before, I'm gonna to connect to these. So I'll just copy and paste this to make it a little bit faster and change the added light signal to added kill signal. Just delete all this and copy, paste this, remove kill signal. And this is just going to be the same thing as before. Again, you can make a function for this. I'm not gonna do that in this video though but it would be wise if you're gonna make changes. And here I'm going to do a disconnection and I'll cover this in just a second. I'll kind of go over what's happening. So not destroy, actually disconnect. Now, whenever a part is tagged with the kill brick tag, this added kill signal will uh, trigger. And then this function will be called. We will connect to the touch event of that part and store the signal or the connection to that touched event and the table whenever the kill brick signal is removed. So whenever a part is untagged, then right here, we're going to disconnect the event and the table. This may be easier to see while we're actually running a game. As you can see in this part, there is a touch interest because we have connected the touch event to this because it is tagged as a kill brick. And then if I untag it, the touch interest is removed because we're disconnecting that event. I tag it and there's touch interest. And that means that, you know, again, I tagged it. This event was fired. This function was called and this connection was created. We stored the connection to the touched event that we made inside of this table. And then when we removed it, this function or this event was fired. This function was called and this code disconnected the function, which is why the touch interest was removed. So I tag it and the touch interest shows up, I untag it and the touch interest is removed. And of course, as you can see, because it is a kill brick, I touch it and I die. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna cover all the details of the rotate tag, but all I did was add a tag called the rotate. And then I added the run service up here at the top of the script. And then down here, here's the code, all of this right here. But I'll be making some videos in the future on both C frames and then also the run service so be looking forward to those. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out, comment any questions below, and subscribe for more in the future.